Big shit, huh. it's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Maker. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my day Man, on. hey, man, we done, hey, we landed. We just landed, man. Yes, Downtown yes, Dallas, yes, man. Yes, hey, yes, man, yes. we got, hey, we got to come on this set with this. Hey, man, this this dude here is something else, man. This I dude know. done fed me, man. You know, when people feed me, I feel like just moving in with you. Know <laughs> <laughs> Say, man, my boy Ricky Book is in the See, building. That's how I got Appreciate him. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Huh? Sure. That's how I got him. Just fed him, and he fed moved him. in. Yeah. Hey, well, man. He's Clean, so I let him move in too because he's clean, he's decent, he smells fresh all the time, fresh haircut, so he's all right with me. So, so what? Um, so we we see what's going on here, man. What's going? What 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 makes you tick? How did you end up saying, "Hey, man, I'm gonna put this together. We are gonna start, uh, you know, uh, we gonna start broadcasting on yeah, TV." Yeah, because last time we you know spoke, he wasn't doing this. Wasn't doing last this. Time we spoke. No. But we talked about it briefly because he yes. had invited us, so so he knew it was coming. Right. But I think it wasn't in this location, and it was some more right. stuff going mm-hmm. on. Right. So talk to us Dude, a little bit what about what happened. It. Was you know when you first open up a business, you build um, the marketing and promotion around it. You know, it's almost kind of like some hype. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, you always look at it one just kind of like having a hit record. When mm-hmm. the hype is gone, what do you do next? So before the hype go away, I wanted to have an outlet to promote the food, promote Breakfast Brothers. So we came up with the name In the Kitchen with the Breakfast Brothers mm-hmm. to keep the food going and have people come on and eat and talk a little bit. That's all it was about it. Mm-hmm. Can and and and. The thing that r- r- what happened from that, I started getting guests. You basically built this hype up around the business to say, hey, man, uh, it's coming. It's coming full fledged. And the last time we hadn't went over there and ate when you came on the show. But right. when I went over there and ate and I ate those red velvet waffles, man, and you you brought no, he a, ate my red velvet yeah, yeah, waffles yeah. because he ordered the regular red vel- <laughs> the regular waffles and mine was so good. I didn't even want to give him any of he that's how it was that plate. good yeah wow so so just give us the, the spill of how you just basically walked up into being putting it on a, a a network where you could see it the TV show is dope I've watched it man it's a success how do you feel and about how hard it? is it to do it because not everybody people have visions to do this thing but nobody knows how to do it. Like you see it on TV, like not that's unattainable for a lot of right, people that right. think it is. Well, well I t- the way I tapped in, I fed CW33. They when we first opened up, they reached out and interviewed me, so I fed them and they ate Ooh. live on the they call the morning uh, morning after shows a mm-hmm. talk show kind of like Kelly and Regis. I forget the two. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. So when I fed them, they loved the food and they was eating live on TV. And this was around. Pandemic was still in, in place, so we was doing it on the Zoom. So they had me, and I did it from our office, and they were on their set. When they got through eating, uh, about a week later, the producer came to to the to the restaurant and mm-hmm. ate too because she didn't get to get any of the food. So we that's when the the dialogue started. Hey man, I got this idea for this show. Y'all ever want somebody to cook this? And then, so she took it back to CW thirty three, and they loved the idea. And we got together and got our crew and got volunteers, and here we are. And like I say, I, I wanted to promote it for the food to keep Breakfast Brothers going. But when I we was inviting guests on, being that I was on the entertainment side of it too, when we was inviting guests, it started becoming real interesting to me. To where these guests, you know, we had doctors, lawyers, I city councilmen, that's, mm-hmm. that's our color. So I was like, well, man, let's do this more to the point where it began promoting Breakfast Brothers, but I started promoting them to show that you you got primary care doctors that's out here, that's our color. You right. got dentists, female dentists, that's our color. Because people you don't got, see that a lot. They don't see it. You got physical therapists, all these people that's our color, mm-hmm. that's right here in Dallas. You got big time producers, artists that lives right here. So I started getting more involved in that and bringing everybody on the show and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the guests that we bring on. They eat Breakfast Brothers and we talk about Breakfast Brothers in the kitchen, but the main platform is give us able 30 that 30 minutes that you can watch it on 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 cw 33 mm-hmm. they find out that it's a doctor in cedar hill that's black mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but what i wanted to know though you talk about the people that are coming on here are getting bigger and bigger but how are your ratings compared to when you first start compared to now 
well what are your ratings look right when the people are not getting bigger and bigger but the show is getting bigger and bigger because people are getting interested in dialing in and tuning in so we're doing anywhere it's averaging 3,000 to 3,500 viewers and that's actually tuning in turning their TVs every on and watching week. every wow. single week Man, you know, the thing I, I like about it is I see a lot of black business owners that's coming through, a lot of black entrepreneurs. And so when I see them linking up with you and I see the movement, it kind of gives us a sound of what's going on in mm -hmm. Dallas, what's going on in the black community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's dope, too, man. So it's a look that really it, it was a spot that was empty that needed to be filled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just think, you know, what you're doing is providing also a, a, a place where people can can be noticed. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? We that, talk about your show all the time. We tell everybody the if they've never heard about it. Y'all need to tune in. Yep. We tell them all the time about it. Definitely. And so, um, so, and I know you're going to come back and talk with us a little bit. I know we got to keep things going. Yeah, because the producers are starting to look correct, at me crazy. Correct. What are you doing? We <laughs> yeah. got to get started. Yeah, yeah. but no. I, what I want to do is I we're going to sit with you for a little while, if okay. that's okay, that's fine. and just check out how you I guys know. move, mm -hmm. man. And uh, we, if you'll come back and, and sit with us, Absolutely. be dope, man. Thank you so yeah. much, man. Thank you for yes, having sir. me. Yes, okay. sir. We're going to go back into it in just a little bit. Okay. Uh, how, how difficult is it, it? Are you used to it now? Well, uh, I never get used to it, but. I tell you my day how it goes every Monday that we shoot. I, I get up at 6 a.m. in the morning. I get to the restaurant. I prepare myself. I get all the um, menu for what we're going to have on the show that day. I go see what's going on. By, I try to get out of the restaurant by noon or 1 to get home, to shave, and relax and get ready for it. But what I did when I first, we first started, I was terrible because I didn't like cameras or being in front of cameras. So I started watching podcasts, talk shows, and then I started – going through my own shows and doing the mm -hmm. editing so i started watching what i was what I you was were doing, doing wrong, wrong and what you're doing right and how many words i was saying the same and being repetitive right. so i start fixing it myself it's kind of like watching film when you in when you're in sports if you're but serious isn't it about boring it, sometimes watching yourself oh until, my god it is. i hate it <laughs> he used to always say do you ever watch the shows over again i'm like mm, sometimes <laughs> not really because yeah. it's, it's, it's like i'm already here so i know everything mm -hmm. that happens but when you're editing and stuff like that, yep. you have to watch. You have to watch well, I ain't gonna lie, I, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I, he I loves love, it. I love to get into it. I love to see what we done, what we can do to create and make it better. You know, um, so I just love that part, man. You know, um, so um, I mean, how long do you plan to do this? Uh, long enough to tap into Dallas Fort Worth to where people are starting to call and ask to be on the show. Uh, I want everybody to have the opportunity that I'm having. And even mm -hmm. come to the point now, the employees get out of work and they go around to local areas and they have their Breakfast Brothers merchandise on and people know it. They ask them questions and they feel good about it. Now it's becoming, Breakfast Brothers, the work there is becoming, it's a good thing to come work there now. People like being at Breakfast Brothers. We have a good time there. Before it was a lot of work, but now it's, it's, it's a jest because it's almost like being famous. You And I want to do this to so we can't do it anymore. And, I'm, and I don't want to do it to where if it got bigger and bigger and I stopped because I got had enough. No, I want to be able to do it one day to where I pass the throne on, over to Lush's or pass the throne where I start having, I have special guests. Maybe E, you be the host that day and you talk to sit down and talk to the special guests. We still eating Breakfast Brothers food. We in the kitchen with the Breakfast Brothers. You know, I, I started it. We going to finish that race. You know, it's almost like passing baton at a four by four relay. I did have a question. Because, um, like, if I missed your show last week and I wanted to see that episode or that three episodes before that, how mm -hmm. can I go back and see that? Do you all um, put anything, like, on YouTube or on a website where I can just go back yes. and be like, mm -hmm. how can we, I see we that? Actually, you can actually stream it on Hulu, too. Okay. But we have a YouTube channel called In the Kitchen with the Breakfast Brothers. Okay. You can go all the way to episode one. one. When I first did it, it was with Dee Dee from the morning mm -hmm. team, and then I did Derry James, which is EJ's trainer boxing trainer so you can go all the way up to that i think we're now we're like today we're filming episode 30 31 we mm -hmm. got 52 episodes well, let me uh, ask how you long the oh, episodes take to come out like when uh, you film because the film the, i want to know the process when you film and how long does it take to edit and how long does it take to air right now we have three shows in front of this one mm -hmm. so it take we takes a week to edit and we i go over all the edits and i have to turn it into cw33 by wednesday Mm -hmm. So uh, now where we're at with three shows, so we're probably this one today is probably four weeks out. So okay. this one run to four weeks. And sometimes I'm, if I'm ahead of it, I pay attention to what we're talking about. Like if somebody's going to release a song and I know this and I say, well, let's talk about the song already out. Because mm -hmm. by the time we air it, the song's already going to be out. That's kind of okay. the same thing we, we do yeah. as well. But sometimes we push things around. So say, can you like 
call CW and say, okay, this episode right here needs to come out next week because of XYZ. Can you shift around episodes? Yeah, you can, but what happens is it goes in sequence. So, because when we get done, when I get through checking the edits in it, once we have approval through all the production team, I send it to a closed caption company called Lab Caption. You send it to them, they close caption, and then they send it to CW33, and that may be episode 28. So, okay. if I turn around and say, let's run episode 29, what it does, it confuses the apps, actual uh, network because then uh, that happened already. So, that's oh, how I know. Okay. So we end up showing, they show aired one show three times in a row. They said, well, that was episode done. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. So, I had to call closed mm. caption, call up, uh, you know, get with the, on my camera, uh, my production team that was shooting and get with the editor and say, okay, we need the number this show, this. And, and if something goes wrong with the, the closed caption, they do the same show. If that's 28 at the first time and I send it back, now they make it 29. Mm -hmm. But it's actually the same show, but I had to fix that too as well. So you kind of got to figure out and be careful. So you got to have a team that's paying t attention to the number Exactly. Sequence. Out of all 30 some odd shows, what, which one sticks out the most to you? I think the one, me personally, and this don't have nothing against with anybody, man, is, is the one with uh, I did with Big Bink. And why? Why is, why is that? Be I think some of the shows to where I don't necessarily have to learn about something. If I know somebody, the the conversation is more interesting because I understand, I know his background and he know mine. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit more about a lot of things that people didn't know that being where he came from, from Chicago, the college he went to in Oklahoma City. So those things and then in BC too, because when I personally know you, those conversations, people, I can tune into those a little bit more instead of learning it off the cue card right. 30 minutes before the show, before we start filming. Um, do you ever see yourself doing a documentary? Uh, one time, you know, Ovid Media, which is, you know, which is Sean, mm -hmm. y'all know Sean. Mm -hmm. Me and him started that mm, probably three, four years ago. So he's got footage, I just hadn't game, got back with him. We actually started a documentary from the time from Oklahoma, Oklahoma City times when I lost my sister in the bombing. So I took him to Oklahoma City where he was filming. He interviewed a lot of people from the, the Ricky Bobby era and all those things. So he, we started that maybe four years ago now, but we never finished it. Do you intend to? Yeah, yeah. And Sean, now he's so busy. And I talked to him one time. He just had to go back to his old, uh, what you call those things, SD Tera card. SD card, yeah. terabytes. Right, you, you and know, find out where the episodes are. And hard drives. Those. Right. Yeah. I just, like I say, I, when I see what you've done and, and see where you come from, being you come from a music management background, uh, business owner, club owner, um, just all the things that you're doing, man, uh, are, you, are, do you, do you, are you comfortable with where you're at? I know you probably never get comfortable, but do you feel like you're where you're supposed to be? No. And, and it's almost kind of like I, and, um, uh, I had uh, Radio Raheem on the show. Okay. You know, his name right. is Thing Never Satisfied, so you know what he was talking I, I'm one of the ones that's never satisfied. Never so his theme of what he's saying is one is good. So I never get comfortable. Because yeah. Because sometimes when you get comfortable, that just that happens in sports. You make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And then now I think I'm in a position to where a lot of people rely on me. You know, me and my business partner, we want to help eras where we bring our club, entertainment clubs back and help Breakfast Brothers to where people have jobs. And even come to the point where the people started the foundation with us in Arlington, maybe one day the franchise start, we offer those individuals first. And then I think I can get comfortable then. But that's right the now, one thing I was looking at the other day. Um, yesterday, we went to a restaurant in Houston. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in, the thing that I was most impressed about is how many people they employed. Yeah. They had, and I was only on that shift, so I can imagine how many people they really have. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. And it's a lot of young people us people mm -hmm. <laughs> everywhere mm -hmm. and i was just amazed at that i'm gonna yeah. tell you what my gm did my gm we got a qr code that um that we had done by um, dream media to where it, when you scan the qr code you can go mm -hmm. straight straight to the to google reviews mm -hmm. google reviews so dame said you know what we got this offer and we have plenty of people coming to the restaurant that love doing what they love our food and they need to talk about it and y'all need to start having to scan the qr code explain to them so the girl started and Dame said, the first girl to get 10 reviews with their name in the reviews, I'm going to get their nails done. Mm. So they started doing it. And one girl won. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take it farther than that. We're gonna, I'm going to surprise y'all. Y'all keep doing it. So in two days, I think we got 56 reviews, all five stars. Wow. That's but great. Hold on. The girl's nails done. Is there a cap on how much you pay no, for them no, nails to be done? Because no, that, can get, that can no, get pricey. It wasn't a cap. So I took it all the way to another thing. So this, what I did is I said, okay, Dame got one girl. So. I'm going to take all seven of you girls. So I went over to Spa Castle 
and got all of them spa oh. days. So they do their spa days tomorrow on Tuesday because we boss close the restaurant. Boss of the year. Wow. Boss, so that's that. why they boy on boss talk because he's talking <laughs> that talk, that real bosses talk. Yeah, yeah, everybody get to go. You, yeah. you get a car. Oprah yeah. Winfrey like, type what, thing. What's you next get a after car. that? Because that's the thing. Yeah. You keep looking at, okay, okay, went to the spa. Like, what, what, what are the treats coming down the line? Okay, I'm going to tell you. Now I know that the QR code can get reviews. Now it's a routine. That's part of the customer service job. So <laughs> we did it to make to show them that it can work. Can work. But then they got a gift out of it. So now that's suspected. Man, <laughs> dope, man. That's dope, man. So, man, hey, man, thank you, man. We we right. appreciate you for inviting us in. Um, man, um, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to, uh, you know, link up with you? And when yep. does the show air and all of that? The show, we're on CW33 at 1030 every Saturday morning okay on cw33 you can, if you want to see me at the restaurant and i'm at the restaurant six days a week because we close on tuesday what's that address 130 east barton road Arlington, texas 7 a.m to 7 p.m wow if you want anything else and want to book our food truck book event catering go to breakfastbrothers.com for careers click the link if you want to get in line and don't want to wait click the link say get in line before you leave your house so you can get in line before you get there check in and then we'll text you and let you know your table is ready how yeah. far will the truck drive if they wanted to book you uh, do you go out of, out of state no, I hadn't got to the point. I had an idea to do a pop-up out of state, but what you have to do is each state that you go to, you got to make sure you get with the city and find out what type of permit. That's it. Oh, okay. You got to have your you permit okay. right before you go because you'll get a rude right. awakening That's going right. to some of these small <laughs> counties down there in Oklahoma. You That's can't right. just pull up in Paul's no Valley sure. or Enid or Muskogee, no or you sure. can't pull up down in Shreveport and go in the Cooper Road. Mm -mm. Nigga, you got to have everything <laughs> together. You know what I'm saying? If you, you ain't got it all together, they will run you out. They ran me out one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I didn't have my peddlers for me. I was selling clothes. <laughs> I don't want to go there, but it was very anticlimactic. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? So, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. man. appreciate y'all. Hey, man, me. we love the place, man. I did want to get into mm. a little bit of how you ended up here doing this show because that's that's to be It's noted. a beautiful location. Yeah. It's dope. The, the thing is about it real quick because I know I got to get back on the set. But right. Well, we were looking for other locations because we was in Plano, and, you know, he was pretty expensive. And, you know, we always want to get back to us. But when I found this one was pretty close to where I live, mm -hmm. and I, instead of calling him, I came over here and, and talked to him, told him what we was trying to do. And the lady said, we'll try give you a trial run. I said, how much it costs? She said, we're not going to charge you anything. The owner said that it was fine. It's a German company. So we did a trial run, and they loved the, the attitude about what it was. It, but I was cooking live here at first, but the mm -hmm. smell was too much for them. So I had to start doing the pre-cooking and bringing it in. Right. And And – when they said that we can do it, we do it every other Monday, and we do it for free. And then they, they got Man. to the point where they love us and trust us so much, they gave us keys to the place. They're not even here. Ain't God good. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? You know, I go to tripping when mm -hmm. God do something yes. great that like was, that. that. Won't all, he do it? That's all him. I had nothing to hey, do with it. Exactly. Man. He just hey, gave me man. the right things to say when I came up here to visit him. Exactly. Man, hey, and it just, it, like I said, man, to be a brother that to accomplish what you have accomplished, man, I commend you. There's our people that look like us, man. Yeah. It's just, it, it's it's not often that you see people doing, you are, you are in a small Ram of mm -hmm. who does what you're doing. Man. I just don't mm -hmm. take the answer for. I don't take the answer for no. No. If somebody tell me here, no, I'm gonna go figure it out. And that's what happened. This is you look at this a billion dollar showroom. These are right. these are this plays that people buy for their mansions. Man. This ain't, mm -hmm. yeah, this mm -hmm. ain't nothing to play with, man. No, so serious. check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a yes, bosses sir. talk. And we out. So